Well, hi everyone. My name is Starla Murillo. And I'm Fletcher Dementiev. For the past few months, Fletcher and I have been working as summer undergraduate research assistants at Loma Linda School of Medicine uh, down in Southern California. We're both so excited and honored to be here today to share with you all the project that we've been working on, looking at the Writing for Focus program as a potential pathway to increase psychosocial well-being and mental health in middle school students. Before we get started, we'd like to acknowledge a few people, including the rest of our team, Benjamin Bellosoto and Kai Madison, as well as the investigators at Loma Linda University, Dr. Larry Ortiz, Dr. Susan Montgomery, and our summer advisor, Dr. Sean Wilson. We'd also like to give a huge thank you to Dr. Esther Walker, who was just up here, for being um, the research director at Outride and for being someone who's so uh, nice and uh, knowledgeable to work with. This project would not be possible without the funding from University of Redlands, NIH, Outride, and Loma Linda University. A little bit about us. I grew up very physically active and was recruited to play collegiate women's basketball at the University of Redlands. That being said, um, exercise has had a really positive impact on my life. And um, coming into college, I decided to pursue the pre-med track. And so being able to work on a research project that um, takes a deep dive into the impact exercise has on mental health has been really rewarding for me. Like Starla, I grew up really active. Um, I was a competitive swimmer for 13 years, and my dad is an avid cyclist. Um, so this is, this is little me uh, holding his bike while he holds mine. Um, I was pretty involved. It was a lot of weekend rides. I also did a community youth development, skills and drills. Um, and I've just been profoundly impacted by, by cycling and sport in general. And to be working on a project that attempts to quantify that for other students um, is incredibly fulfilling. So our work couldn't come at a more critical time. This is data collected by the National Gover Governors Association over the last year. Um, you can read the statistics for yourself. Four in 10 students feel persistently sad or hopeless. Uh, three in 10 students have experienced poor mental health. Um, and two students out of 10 um, are seriously considering attempting suicide. Um, and this falls in line with sort of the more research side, um, which over the past several years have, has found that more than 50% or about 50% of lifetime mental illness begins by the age of 14, so middle school age, um, and also that the COVID-19 pandemic has really exacerbated mental health issues among adolescents. So current literature shows us that there are a lot of benefits to cycling, which has been a common theme for today. Um, we can all read the benefits to cycling, but the most important one that we're going to focus on today is relieving stress. So given the relationship between um, relieving stress and mental health, uh, we wanted to look into two questions. The first question we wanted to look at were, uh, was, do students who participate in the Writing for Focus program experience an increase in psychosocial well-being? And the second question we wanted to answer um, being, do students who participate in the Writing for Focus program have a positive cycling experience and want to pursue, pursue cycling even after the program has ended? So to answer these questions, of course, we need a methodology. It starts with Dr. Walker and receiving um, data sets from her. The, the data sets that we've been working with from, from the, um, for, for this summer and that we'll be sharing with today are from the fall 2021 semester and the spring 2022 semesters. Um, here's a, a group of all the, all the schools, the blue and the yellow dots who are in this cohort. Um, the yellow dots are separated, um, and that's because those are schools that were also in the previous year's cohort, um, which is COVID impacted. And really, we're really excited. Just a few weeks ago, we submitted for review a paper uh, looking only at these schools and the potential impacts that COVID had, had on the Ride for Focus program um, and those students. So be on the lookout for that. This is a uh, a, a distribution analysis that we did at, just at the beginning um, to compare our, our pre-survey takers to our, uh, our pre-intervention students um, group to our post-intervention group. We can see here but that when we look at gender distribution, 
they're roughly equal, which is uh, great for analysis. We are fairly confident that we can compare the two groups directly. This is a uh, similar, only looking at, at a racial distribution. And again, our percentages are roughly equal before and after, which is important um, because the anonymous nature of the surveys means we can't track students on an individual basis. In the surveys that the students completed, there were two incorporated metrics looking at psychosocial well-being. The first metric um, we're going to be talking about is PSC 17Y, which looks at overall psychosocial well-being. Unfortunately, due to the time constraint, we won't be focusing on this, but instead we'll be getting into the WHO 5, which was designed to look at overall psychosocial well-being, but has particular sensitivity to depressive symptoms. Um, after we, uh, afterwards, we need to analyze the data, so we will do so by grouping students and performing statistical analysis to determine if there are any statistically significant differences among these said groups. So the first analysis that we do is just the general student populations before and after. It's the most high level comparison um, that we can do. Um, the WHO5 metric, um, the scores go from zero to 100 and intuitively the higher the score, the better your uh, mental health um, is there's a critical cutoff if you're at 50 or below it means you're at heightened clinical risk um, for depression this um, this graph shows um, the average score uh, before and after the ride for focus program and we can see that this change this increase in score um, is statistically significant once we've done a primary effect analysis we're able to look at um, outcomes in the context of different risk factors. Um, the first risk factor that we really looked at was gender. Um, this, uh, we've heard a lot about this today. Dr. Rosenbaum um, mentioned how access to females um, for physical activity um, is, is pretty low, at least historically. Um, and this sort of data was encouraging because we separated uh, male and female students before the intervention and compared their two um, average scores, we can see a, a huge disparity, almost 10 points before the Ride for Focus program. But then we compared males before the intervention to males afterwards and females from before to females after. And we saw that independently of the other gender, both groups benefited. The only challenge uh, that kind of remains is despite seeing benefit in both groups, there wasn't a huge change in, in the disparity between the two. And so our question moving forward is, how can we close that gap after the program between male and female students? This is um, another analysis looking at something more modifiable. Um, students have a little bit more control um, versus something like a socioeconomic status, um, participating in extracurricular activity. So um, students who were in a band, in an orchestra, in a sport on campus, speech and debate, they were all placed into one, into one group and students who had no school part, um, participation were in another. Our pre-intervention comparison is in line with, with uh, literature which says that um, students who are more involved in schools tend to have better psychosocial well-being than those who, who aren't involved in school activities. Um, and again, we can see that both groups uh, benefit from the Ride for Focus program. Um, it seems to be an effective supplement for those who are already active in schools, and for those who aren't, they're seeing a benefit too. The only thing left, we do have a disparity that still exists after the Riding for Focus program. Although the quantitative data is very important, we believe that in this project, the qualitative data is equally as important. So here we can see um, the responses students had to the question what they liked most about bicycling. Um, it was very encouraging to see the most commonly used word was fun. Um, and Dr. Simon uh, Rosenbaum touched on it a little bit earlier, but um, students who are enjoying the program will have more of a, um, a better outcome and a, a, feel the impact of the program even more than the students who don't um, 
who aren't enjoying the program because students who are not having fun are not as engaged. And if they're not as engaged, then they're not reaping all the benefits the program has to offer. And here we can see um, the interests of students to, uh, who are likely to or who want to pursue writing outside of school. Um, we can see that 64% of males and 50% of females are interested in continuing to ride after the program has ended. Here we can see um, what biking activities students are most interested in. So there's a, a common theme among socializing and exploring. Uh, students like to ride with friends around neighborhoods, on trails, um, and there's less of an interest in riding to school and racing. Here we can see um, how many students felt they had gained a sense of confidence in their ability to ride bikes. So nearly three-fourths of males and three-fourths of females felt they had gained that confidence, which was really good to see. Just to sum up everything that we've seen so far in all the graphs, uh, the Writing for Focus program has resulted in a lot of, of positive outcomes. Um, going back to uh, the questions that we were aiming to answer uh, or to investigate, do students who participate in the Writing for Focus program experience an increase in psychosocial well-being? So far, we've seen that students, regardless of their school engagement level, experience an increase in psychosocial well-being. In addition, um, males and females also e experience an increase in psychosocial well-being. In terms of the second question we were looking to investigate, do students who participate in the Writing for Focus program uh, have a positive cycling experience and want to pursue cycling even after the program has ended? Here we can see that 70% of students felt they had gained a sense of confidence in their ability to ride bikes, um, which we interpreted as they did have a positive experience riding bikes. And um, we also have seen that nearly three-fourths of males and three-fourths of females um, are interested in continuing to ride outside of the program. So just like any project, we're not without our limitations. The first um, and perhaps most crucial one is that we don't have students who are taking surveys but not participating in the Ride for Focus program and are instead in a general PE class or not in a PE class at all, depending on the school. Um, and that would be really useful and give us a lot of confidence in, as, in assessing causality uh, between the Writing for Focus program and the trends that we're seeing the improvement in, in psychosocial well-being. And the second um, point is that this is uh, self-reported data, which is subjective, no matter the age group. Um, and that leads us really nicely into our future directions. So every year, more and more schools are added. Um, you guys will be implementing the Writing for Focus program. We'll hopefully be collecting data from your schools and continuing to monitor, uh, monitor effectiveness um, and the, sec the second thing is that we'd like to incorporate those control groups, as I was mentioning. Um, we're getting closer to that point. Um, locally in San Bernardino County, um, we were just talking to a, to a teacher at a, at a middle school, um, and we're hoping that at least near Loma Linda University, we might be able to do some of that work. We'd also like to track students over a long period of time, maybe six months or a year after, just to see if there's a long-term effect. Um, we'd like to measure biological um, markers, physiological markers. Again, survey data is subjective, but seeing changes in, in biology is, is a bit more objective. Um, and that just makes a stronger case for, for the work that you guys are all are doing, the work we're doing. Um, and then lastly, having a, a nutrition or a mental health, a specific mental health component to the Writing for Focus um, program uh, might be helpful in, in increasing its overall effectiveness, especially when it comes to student psychosocial well-being. Lastly, Starla and I, as we, as we talked about when we introduced ourselves, were both really positively impacted by the work that people like you did um, you know, 10, 15 years ago. Um, and we know we're not the only ones who've been positively impacted um, and have an interest in research and, and program outcomes. And so our call to action to you guys is, if there's people in your schools and your local communities, if they're local um, universities with resources, reach out, make connections, um, get students involved not only in the program, but also program outcomes. Because we're out there, um, and the more people we have working on the project, um, the more data we can get through, the more trends we can analyze, the more of an impact we can have. 
at this time if there are any questions.